So this is my take on bullet sizing, uh, high-tech or powder-coated bullets using a Lee push-through sizing die and a Lee C-press. I've got the Lee press fixtured upside down like so many other people have, but I've got it fixtured upside down in a, in a basically a wood frame that I've built. The frame itself doesn't have to be incredibly strong because all the, all the force is be, really between the, the pusher on the end of the ram and the, where the die is held on the press. So the press is carrying all the load. Um, so what I've done with this is to uh, basically use a, a, a transfer plate that's going to swing over and pick up bullets out of a tube, a drop tube. It, so every time you swing it over, it'll pick up a bullet out of the drop tube, and then it'll come back and drop that bullet into the die. And so when you push the pull the handle back up, it'll push the bullet right through. Pretty straightforward, pretty easy. I think there's there's quite a few other folks out there who have done something similar. Maybe maybe not with a swing plate, maybe more of a of an axial plate. But the same kind of concept, just using a solid plate with a hole in it as an escapement. So mine is a little bit different in the sense that I've got uh, a little bit of adjustment. I've got a, a screw here where I can fine-tune how far my plate comes over. Uh, I found that was, that was helpful when I was dealing with longer bullets. And it also lets me separate the, the cam function in terms of being able to slide it over and bring it back. So anyway, so that's how I'm, I'm picking up bullets. I get the bullets to this drop tube using a, a transfer, a, a magazine guide. And the magazines that I have are based on plywood. They could be made out of plastic. I just, I had a lot of plywood, so I made them out of plywood. This is the width of two sheets of three quarter inch Baltic birch. And I, I took these sheets of Baltic birch and uh, cut V's in them with my, my dado set on my table saw. Light's not great here. You can sort of see, if I get some focus, two, I've got two 45 bullets in here. So I've cut data, I've cut 45 degree slots in there, and those 45 degree slots effectively acted like uh, two V grooves or four contact points in a circle. And so by doing that, I was able to cut a whole lot of slots into a, into a board and have a pretty high capacity magazine. I have, the magazines are, are caliber specific, you know, or, or caliber range specific. So mine go like, I have a magazine for nine millimeter and 10 millimeter, and another magazine for 44 and 45 caliber. Um, this is a magazine that I've got already loaded for, for nine millimeter. It works where it's got an escapement bar on the bottom. You can see it's a solid bar with a hole in it. Fits into a slot. So I put that escapement bar in here, and then I just basically just drop my bullets onto the, the platform. This is a, a V-groove plate. So I just drop them all in here, and then just flip them around so that they're all pointing nose down. It actually goes really quick, probably a little bit faster than dropping the bullets one by one into a tube. It doesn't require quite the dexterity, in my opinion, uh, as dropping a, a single bullet into a tube. You can just kind of flip them around with your fingers. So this particular magazine is capable of holding like 375, 147 grain 9 millimeter bullets. And I think when I calculated it out for like 380, like 95 grain 380 bullets, it was, you know, upwards of 600 bullets in this magazine. So if you, if you don't have a collator, this is a, a, a good concept for having a high capacity um, feeding mechanism for your, for your bullet feeder. So anyway... My magazines were set up where I had a magnet in each corner. And uh, those magnets hold the magazine closed when I, when I close it. So essentially, I just I put my bullets in there and then I just flip the magazine closed. At this point, the magazine is, is very secure because my, the magnets I use are pretty powerful. <coughs> so pick up my magazine, put it in my, put it in my machine in my holder. The holder has got a little pin that basically prevents prevents this uh, collator plate from going too far forward. And as I slide the magazine in, the collator plate of course is pushed out. You can sort of see that. So I just push it slowly until I reach a point where the hole in this plate matches up with the hole that lines up with this, uh, this drop tube. It will of course fill the thing up with bullets. And then I just pick them up.
goes pretty quick. Go a little faster if I wasn't doing this all one-handed. So once I get to the end, so I'm at, done with that stick of bullets, I move it, sli move my magazine slightly forward, and I pick up another stick of bullets. I'm holding on just one other little detail on this thing. I've got a top plate on the on the magazine, so I don't. If I flip the bullets over, they don't. The magazine upside down, they don't just drop out on the floor. And then I've also got a groove cut in it that matches up with a little plate that I put on top of this. So the bullet, the magazine, if the magazine is way far out, it doesn't, it won't tip off. Other other little things to keep it from falling on the ground. So anyway, that's my take on on doing the sizing with a, a leap with a Lee uh, push through die. You can kind of see my mechanism a little bit more as I get closer. Works pretty well. I like it a lot. I will like it even more when I replace that with an electric collator. <laughs>